Hey guys, it's been a bit of a wait between videos, but we promise it's been worth it. September has been one of the best months for indie games this year with a littering of exciting early access releases and a super strong top 5. So without further ado, here are your top 10 indie games for September. At 10th spot is Flame in the Flood flowing into early access. This Kickstarter game has already impressed with its country rock soundtrack and moody southern setting. And now this early version shows it's a good roguelike too. What we like most is how the game makes you feel the struggle to survive. Keep your eyes on this grand old flame. Rivals of Ether isn't holding back any punches. It's Super Smash Bros in pixel form. Much like its obvious inspiration, KOs come from ringouts but a few changes like the emission of shields and grabs tweak the formula. The roster is filled out with 6 original characters and 2 more are coming out upon full release. If you ever wanted to play Smash on PC, this is how. Be warned however, as the servers down under are a little laggy. It is time to smash, bash, destroy and pulverize in Rampage Knights. This frenetic beat em up is packed full of dungeons to raid and is ideal for lone rampages or riding with a friend. Expect roguelike conventions such as permadeath and randomization to create the kind of replayable feel you get from an Isaac or Risk of Rain. Our third and last early access offering, Pulsar Lost Colony, has a subnautical feel, only up in the stars rather than under the ocean. It's more multiplayer focused, with up to five able to take up different roles on the starship. What you do is kind of up to you. Traversing the galaxy, you can explore planets, or maybe you'll run into hostiles on the way. There are some bugs and content holes at the moment, so tread cautiously. Dropsy is that clown that the folks around town would warn you about. They tell you of the monster he became. How he killed his own mother by sparking that circus tent blaze. Clowns have always had a dark side behind the makeup, but a recent cultural and psychological shift has seen them become known simply as symbols of creepiness and fear. Dropsy, an old school point and click adventure, explores the struggles of a clown who genuinely wants to make people happy in this day and age. It's hilarious, happy and tragic all in one. You are a renowned expedition leader, about to uncover the greatest mystery of your career, the emerged island. As you start exploring this mystical place, in a fabricated 19th century world, there are many uncharted and exotic treasure abundant territories to uncover. With a trio of pioneers at your command, these lands are yours for the taking, but not without a fight. Renowned Explorers International Society, long title much, employs a simple yet inventive combat system. Every run-in you have gives you three choices of approach, fight, charm or taunt. It's refreshing to put down the cannons and fling insults at your enemy instead of bombs. It also adds some much needed character to what are often in games serious confrontations. Plus, it really adds to the story building. The game gives you 20 characters to select for missions. With the randomization of the world map, you should be able to cycle through the characters and try out a fresh approach. Exploring isn't just about the loot at the end, it's about the adventure. And Renowned Explorers most certainly captures that. Have you ever looked out the window at your town and thought, I can do better? Well now you can! Hi! I'm Rick Selfridge, the mayor of Caribou City. Concrete Jungle is classified as a city builder, but if you go in expecting a Sim City like experience, you'll be disappointed. This is because city building is combined with deck building, making the game less about creating a free form metropolis and more about completing focus objectives. Cards representing houses, shops, and other buildings are placed onto the grid. Doing this in the right manner will net you points, clearing columns, and completing the stage. The general idea is that buildings will create negative or positive effects around them, collecting the positive effects with other structures is what will get you points. It sounds simple, but in practice, managing the tight grid is tricky, and the seemingly innumerable amount of unique cards throws up a lot of variables. The cities look adorably like miniature models, the writing has personality and the voice acting warmth, and the ambient sounds are soothing. We haven't played against the AI or other people, but apparently those modes make the game even harder. So just remember, it's a concrete jungle out there. Kind of vague passion to make things right. All right, let me just get this out of the way. 
You are Simon Jarrett, correct? Right. From the makers of Amnesia, The Dark Descent, comes Soma, another atmospheric horror title. Set underneath the seas of a science fiction Atlantic Ocean, the game doesn't just terrify with jump scares and gore, but also at a psychological level. It questions the player's identity, asking them what it means to be human. Kind of like the best Star Trek and Doctor Who episodes do. There's also an accompanying live miniseries with episodes being released daily until October 5th. It's definitely worth a watch as, unlike the Payday miniseries, is well made. All up, it's hard to find fault with Soma, it's properly scary and polished, and has received much deserved critical acclaim. Our first memories of Undertale date back to early last year when we played a demo version. We got stuck and after a 15 minute struggle gave up on it. 18 months later and we finally have an idea what this game is about. It's a postmodernist RPG that really loves to play with conventions and usually in the most hilarious ways. The game runs through a series of puzzle rooms. They are not particularly difficult and mostly exist so as to host the encounters. They are what make up the meat of the game. In these confrontations, you can stay and fight, but you also always have the option to just walk away. This creates two opposing playstyle choices in pacifism and aggression. Without giving too much away, these choices have vital repercussions. The monsters are truly bizarre, such as the jelly that does a sexy wiggle when you attack it. The text is filled with in-jerks and references and consistently breaks the fourth wall. I think it's hard to explain the brilliance of Undertale without showing it, but I'll guarantee that if you're familiar with RPG conventions, it'll leave you in stitches. Our number one game of September is Armello, a digital board game with anthropomorphic creatures. Next week, we'll have a look at how by combining traditional and digital board game elements, Armello was able to brilliantly innovate. Until then, thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indieformer.